Utah. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. If you have, is there a certain time point where if an extension is going to come, you want that to be done before you start to really concentrate on football? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll probably talk about the contract next March, and until then, just focus on this season and the job to do right now. So nothing of late, though, as far as talks in the last couple of months or something? No, just going to work. Oh, the tension. The tension from former lead Vikings beat writer at the Star Tribune, Judd Zolgad. Uh, I'm, I want us to play that clip again at some point here. I'll call for it because I actually thought it was a really fair, great, interesting exchange. Kirk got a little chafed, I feel like, that somebody would ask about it. But, but we'll get to it. Judd has uh, come back from day two. Not come back. He's still there at Twin That's Cities Orthopedic behind me. Performance Much Center. better room. Better lighting this. and look at it right behind me. <laughs> In fact, yeah, every 30 seconds, it's like a chirping fire alarm. The Vikings horn sounds Duh. when you're podcasting from that room. But uh, yeah, welcome in live on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. This is Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. Kevin O'Connell will join the podcast tomorrow. So be sure to check your Purple Daily podcast and YouTube feeds for that. A shout out to our friends at TCL. They have award-winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. TCL makes more than just TVs. They offer mobile products, audio devices, and home appliances. TCL brings you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. Learn more at TCL.com. So you've got a notebook full of observations from today. Oh, back to the digital. I felt I disappointed you so much that I I went back to the uh, phone (laughs) note-taking. You were locked out of your broom closet, but they upgraded you to a penthouse here. But um, so, so you asked Kirk Cousins about his contract. Let's just start on the Kirk Cousins conversation. This is the first time he has spoken to the media uh, in at least I don't know three weeks. I want to say two or three weeks. He talked at uh, he talked at what at then was it the beginning of OTAs or was it something else? He definitely did a press conference after the contract thing came up because he was grilled about that at the time. Yeah, but it's been quite. But it's been a while. Yeah. So what did you, you know, we played, you know, part of his press conference there, but what did you sort of get from from his press conference today? Well, just on the contract thing, I thought it was fair to ask because we have talked about a lot and speculated about if there could be an extension, um, I think, which is a viable point. Like there's they have no plan right now. I don't think they're going to be terrible. Um, Jared Hall is not taking reps. So like this is, he is just a fifth round guy who is, who is here to learn. Uh, but he is not in any type of mix here. Like there's no expedited and you know, that doesn't mean O'Connell is not trying to help him, but there's no expedited plan here. And so Kirk Cousins coming back in 2024, um, at the right price point becomes incredibly realistic. So I was just curious and look, I mean, you know, there's a chance they've talked and Kirk wouldn't say, say that I don't blame him for that. Um, mm-hmm. but on the contract thing, you know, when you have a, a quarterback, a number one a quarterback, who's a big name, who makes a lot of money going into the last year of his contract, I think it's fair game to occasionally get updates. Um, I don't think he was super comfortable with the question, but I mean, he, he can't be surprised. And I think like, he was fine with it. But that being said, we have definitely gone down the path and we're not the only ones of the fact that, you know, I think it's more, I think it's more viable now that Kirk cousins could possibly get a contract extension than it was in March when we thought, and they obviously did try to trade up in the draft. Um, so, you know, if you let this thing, if indeed he is telling the complete truth and it gets to next March and he's coming off a really good year, that's going to be very intriguing if he's not and you know you've still got jefferson's contract and hawkinson's contract uh which are all going to also be involved in the process here so i thought the no update itself was just intriguing because i am and i'm not saying this in a negative way i think we're all really curious what the plan is at quarterback and like are they setting things up and it appears right now that they're probably not yeah. right now well i thought can we can we play this again actually because I thought this was a really fair exchange that he's a lame duck contract guy right now, despite having put up a bunch of really good numbers. It's this, it's this sort of weird. I don't think it's awkward. I think he has accepted it. I don't think like it's weird between him and the organization. He's being a professional. He's been in all the OTAs or most of them. He's here at minicamp. 
he's clearly just like compartmentalizing it. He's made a quarter of a billion dollars playing football, but you know, it's an odd situation that you have a franchise quarterback that puts up 4,000 yards a year in 25, 30 touchdowns. And the team has kind of said, eh, we're going to, we're going to pump the brakes on the contract train here for a second and see what happens. So let's play this one more time. If you have, is there a certain time point where if an extension is going to come, you want that to be done before you start to really concentrate on football? Yeah, I think we'll we'll probably talk about the contract next March, and until then, just focus on this season and the job to do right now. So nothing of late, though, as far as talks in the last couple of months or something. No, just going to work. I just want all the young, aspiring sports media members to take note there, and I'm not like trying to blow smoke up Judd's ass here, but that was a great one, two punch fair question sequence where the first, the first question was, Hey, how do you feel about, you know, the contract situation or whatever? And then you got information out of him by asking him, have you had any conversations about the contract since it was put on the table? Mm -hmm. And he said, no. And that's interesting. It's an interesting story to me that he confirmed yeah, I mean, we're not, we're, we're probably not going to talk about this until March. So, bravo. Oh, thank the, you. Very the beat much. writer thank chops you. came out thank in you. full force there today at practice. And I, th I thought that was a great little fair one two punch question sequence. And if Kirk gets off to a good start, it's going to be a, a story. Like, it, he is the quarterback of the Vikings, he is highly paid, and he has not been probably the best QB of all time, but he's been productive. And so, yeah, this is go this story. If this story bores you, I got bad news. It's going to continue to come up until there is some type of clear uh, definition of what direction this team is going to go. So yeah. how can it yes. bore you by the way? Like this well, is the, this is the like, most important watch. position on the team. I know, but I think some fans are like, you know, let's just concentrate on football. Let's watch football and blah and contracts, you know, Contract bore some people, but to your point, it's the most important thing. And, you know, I so it's funny. I got the idea that Kirk wasn't super comfortable with the question, but I agree with you, Phil. In his defense, I don't think he's super uncomfortable with the situation, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, he seems absolutely fine. He's having fun. He's certainly not pouting. I don't think he wants to, and I guess I don't blame him on this. I don't think he probably wants to talk about it, but I also don't think it's going to curtail him. I don't think he's going to change a bit. Yeah. I think he is still, I think, and he won't say this obviously, but I think he is a far happier camper and he should be going into the last year of his contract with KOC. than he was in the midst of a multi-year contract with Mike Zimmer. That's probably fair. Yeah. I think that's, and you're right. He's organizing. Wasn't he the one that organized the, the wear your Jersey to work day yesterday. And so he's clearly immersed in the building of this team. He talked today about, hoping that maybe there's a way that Dalvin Cook can come back, which I actually, I actually, comment. I actually didn't love that because if I'm a running back in the room right now, I'm thinking, wait a second, are we not good enough? Does he not want us to carry the football? But that surprised me because Kirk doesn't really give you a lot. Like I was surprised to even broach that. Yeah. It was, I don't know what it meant exactly. Like, has he talked to Dalvin and Dalvin said he wanted to come, you know, it was just a very, it was a very unKirk like, like Kirk's soliloquy about Cook was very Kirk, you know, complimentary. But then to be like, oh, he perhaps could come back. I was like, well, what? It's I almost something said, you what would. What do you mean? Right. It's, it's all. Yeah. See, it's I almost, dropped the ball there, folks. You did. You should have followed up. It's almost something you would say if you had information that other people didn't. Right. Correct. It's like that, you know, something. But you know what I, I what I love about where the Vikings are at right now? They do have the Daniil Hunter situation that's kind of awkwardly lingering. But it, up until last Thursday or Friday, it's mostly just kind of played out behind the scenes. And the only thing that's really come out is, hey, they've gotten to a point where they're at least at an impasse with the contract. And so there's been some calls about a potential trade. It's not like this tumultuous, you know, unrepairable situation. But they've navigated letting go a bunch of key veterans, a bunch of key leaders, telling the franchise quarterback, we're not going to extend your contract. You're going to go last year a contract. Uh, all these potentially, and Justin Jefferson in the middle of maybe an historic non-quarterback contract, and everything seems pretty kumbaya. And then you look over at a team like the Buffalo Bills in the last 48 hours. I don't know how much you guys have followed this. This weird, ambiguous Stefan Diggs drama. It's not contract-related, 
but there's some things behind the scenes, some conversations that had to take place. Things got really heated yesterday, and so McDermott told Diggs, you know, you can excuse yourself. It's an excused absence. But then McDermott made reference that it's like a really bad situation. Like, what is this weird drama in Buffalo, and why? You guys are you're one of the best teams in the NFL. You all get paid a bunch of money. Like, just quit being well, weird and figure it out. I like that the Vikings have dealt with a lot of potentially weird situations without it crumbling publicly like you're seeing in Buffalo right now. Well, and as we, as we saw at the end of Diggs here, Diggs has the ability, he's a smart guy, but he has the ability to make things weird. Justin yeah. Jefferson's very good, and I mean, this could could change. Phil, I think we once in the radio days did a whole segment on how it was great that Diggs and Thielen at the time were low maintenance because that position is such a high maintenance position. That clearly changed. But right now, Justin Jefferson doesn't make things odd. Like, he's just a normal guy who has outstanding talent. And the fact that Daniil Hunter is not here is probably a plus. So I think the Vikings are, one, fortunate, and two, have managed things well so that it doesn't, like, you don't have this weird specter. I would rather almost have a guy like Hunter hold out and not show up than I would show up and be disgruntled. Yeah. That casts a weirder pall over the proceedings if a guy acts weird or causes friction because he's ticked off. Well, and like, what are you still mad about? Why Why wasn't this addressed? And now, now we're doing Buffalo Bills daily. Yeah, it's not here, contract, but. too. He's just a weird man. He's a weird human being. Diggs yeah. is. It, it's just that simple. And then go, it's the Diggs playbook. Then you go take to Twitter with some weird cryptic tweets and whatever. So anyways, I'm glad that's other? done. I'm glad that's done. Yeah. Any other final uh, thoughts on just the Kirk Cousins stuff from his yes. media session today or from practice? Uh, well, I've got a bunch of practice stuff, but on Kirk, uh, he, he was asked pretty extensively about his appearance on the QB documentary um, on Netflix quarterback, which comes out next month and uh, talked fairly extensively about it. And the fact that it gives, it's going to give fans um, a peek into a lot of things that, that they don't see. Not surprisingly, it's an NFL films production. So it's going to be, which are, and those are actually really good. Mm -hmm. He did say a couple things that um, piqued my curiosity. He said there were certain situations where they were not allowed in. So like as far as meetings went, and I don't know where that line got drawn, but he said there are some things we could have shown you that would be really intriguing, but we just couldn't. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know. My guess is that this went team by team. So, you know, I'm guessing Marcus Mariota, the Falcons at the time, didn't care as much as Kirk potentially. So with some of these guys, you might see more, um, yeah. but the Vikings, so this was signed off for, and again, two years ago, this does not happen because there's no way that Spielman and Zim let this occur. Kirk said credit to Quasi and O'Connell who signed off and said, that's fine, do it. They then drew some lines here. So we're not going to see everything, which is not surprising. And um, Kirk said his greatest hope is that this is going to be a really interesting insight for his kids and grandkids someday to see sort of like the behind the scenes of what he went through, because clearly we don't, you know, get a view of that from press conferences. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. So it's eight parts, 45 minutes each. It comes out on July 12th. Um, I just, yeah, I, I'm fascinated just to sort of see what did they pick up? Is Kirk different behind the scenes in certain ways than maybe people think? Is he just, kind of boring like why did they choose Kirk there must be a reason I'm sure they went through a vetting process for which quarterbacks they wanted or maybe they wanted like obviously the star of the league yeah. Patrick Mahomes and then all the way down to maybe a guy that's been kind of a bust and then huh? Kirk Cousins kind of in the middle he's not a bust by any means but just like you know he's not Patrick Mahomes yeah it's so definitely be from a character arc standpoint it makes a ton of sense the greatest in the league that mid-tier guy, and then mm -hmm. the fringe guy. Like, it's just, it's a perfect character arc, and I'm curious to see how all of them kind of blend together. Yeah. Be really cool to see if maybe they take some audio clips from Purple Daily and sprinkle yeah, them into some episodes, too. You know, probably mm. Kind of cool if, if that happened. That'd we'll see. See if we can make that happen. Uh, write this down. All right, Judd, what else do you want to get into here on your mini camp musings? Um, so today was the last practice before training camp starts. There are a couple of headlines, position battle-wise, that I think are very clear going into training camp that will intrigue you. One is brand new. The first is this. Kane Wongwu is the number two running back right now. Ty oh. Chandler is third. There is no question about it. Interesting. Um, I don't know that it, 
I don't know that Ty Chandler looked as good a, as we expected. And the way that they ran things, it's Madison, Wongwu, Chandler, McBride. Who, by the way, I forgot to mention this yesterday in his press conference, and I don't think this was by accident because he doesn't like, he doesn't pull this much. Kevin O'Connell referred to McBride as the rookie. So he's like Madison and Wong Wu and Chandler and the rookie. Okay. Huh? Um, a so dis- I think disrespect or what do you, th- what do you, well, mean I think that, that drop off on the depth chart might be pretty severe. You know, Mc- McBride missed a bunch of practices supposedly with a hamstring, yeah. but then he signed his contract and started practicing. I, I just, I wonder if there was something oh. at work there. It, it, it's weird that he signed oh. his contract and now he's totally healthy. And now, but anyway, I don't think Kevin O'Connell forgets the guy's name. Okay. So I, I don't think it's like, I forgot McBride's mm. name. Sorry about that. Uh, but the, but the headline here is that, it's definitely go- going into camp right now. Uh, Madison Wong Wu Chandler, top three. It's not Chandler well, Wong Wu. Well, I mean, if they can find a way to leverage, you know, one of the, the fastest runners in, is it fair to say that Wong Wu is one of the fastest guys in the NFL? Yeah, like just in the, o- the open field? Yeah. yeah. I mean, definitely speed, one of the fastest yeah. guys here. Probably. So awesome. If they can, if they can find a way to do something that really hasn't been done with him yet in the NFL, I think that would be, That'd be pretty great. Pretty, All right. Pretty great. All right. Second thing, second headline position battle wise that I saw today, and this is new. I don't think this was yesterday because I, I was, of course, taking notes in the old school notebook yesterday, updated to a little digital today. Um, and that is this. Makai Blackman was working in the nickel with the first team and Andrew Booth was with the second team. Mm. So Blackman, who I think that they like, and keep in mind, too, the interesting thing. So the nickel was uh, Byron Murphy Jr. inside, Blackman, and Caleb Evans outside. And the interesting thing about this is, you know, Blackman was drafted by a team that had Brian Flores in the room. b Flo is in the room. Booth and Evans were drafted by, the, by Donatel and that staff. Yeah. And and so I wonder if they are beginning and plus, you know, Booth has been hurt a ton. He just gets hurt a lot. And that's a that's a problem. But as we go into the um, the month or so now of hiatus uh, from what, what I saw today, Makai Blackman has a very good chance to start outside and Booth might be the odd man out. So, yeah, do you well, do you think they're just mixing and matching because there's just positions up for grabs here or do you think today signifies a change in in the wins here i think they're mixing and matching if both guys get in with the first team a lot but wasn't booth running with the first team yesterday he was but what i'm saying is then today blackman was and ordinarily they'll rotate them in a practice in and out so like the fact that they had blackman i'm just saying i think that because blackman is is a flores draft pick probably fits a profile brian flores wants and and if I think their goal is for Evans to to start, if of course he can avoid concussions. So I just wonder if Flores would be more comfortable with a guy that he feels like he drafted. I yeah, or helped I think, draft. I I would think that makes some sense. It's so tough when you because ultimately Quasi and KOC are the ones that have the vision for the right. You're going to turn over coordinators and stuff, but. Um, yeah, but we're not talking about first round picks here. Booth was a second round pick, often injured. I don't think anyone's untouchable here by any means. Mm-hmm. And Blackman is said to be one of the more NFL ready cornerbacks in that draft last year with just a bunch of college experience. Um, so I, I'm that's probably the, the most interesting position battle to keep an eye on is just everything in the defensive backfield and how do they deploy safeties? How do they? How do they deploy um, cornerbacks in the nickel, right? So mm-hmm. really curious to keep following this for sure. And as far as the defensive backfield goes regarding safeties, no question about it. Lewis Seen is going to show up to training camp as a backup safety. And Lewis Seen looks like he's going to be used as a safety. And by that, I, I mean, Josh Metellus comes in and sort of plays this rover role. Um, Bynum and Metellus at one point switched that. So Bynum was the rover. Metellus dropped back with Harrison Smith at safety, but there was no, there is no sign. It looks like that scene is 100% going 
going to be at at safety, so he's not going to be a multi-position type of guy, and he is going to be second team entering training camp again. Which I would means, write that. Ink. Wow, which means barring injury or some drastic performance change, he's going to enter his second season as a backup, right? Mm-hmm. Or or are can you tell? Are they using him on special teams, or is it just yes. generally that? Nope. Okay, he's on special teams. Which, which is actually speaks more to, to the fact he's a backup. Gosh. So that's, that's, yes. that's pretty, that yeah. hasn't changed. Now, if you wind up finding guys later in the draft and stuff and it make, yeah, I in mean, the 49ers are a great example. They had one of the more high profile whiffs on a first round quarterback, but then they find all these other pieces. So uh, if they did whiff on Lewis scene, they're going to have to make up for it in other ways by combing through some of these other draft picks. But yeah, it's God, that's fascinating. It's God, that's, mm-hmm. A backup, mm-hmm. man. How much of it's injury related, do you think? Looks like he's moving fine. And I think he worked his ass off to get back. Mm. Interesting. You know? All right. <laughs> see any slow right decisions today from Kirk? Did no. you see any slow right decisions? Um, Kirk was picked off again at, oh, at, no. at one point. Oh, we love him. At one Don't point. In fact, he should have been he should have been he should have been picked off. Byron Murphy Jr. jumped a route for KJ. Osborne and literally is there, and somehow the ball went through Murphy's hands. So KJ mm. made made the catch, but that was a pick six. Like if that occurs in a game, we're going to be like, oh man, miss pick six. That's tough to see. Oh man, yeah. But, I have um, a feeling Kirk could have some some of those well, against this defense during some of the training camp practices too. So so that look out. that does get to the point of Kirk and to tie together his um, performance the last two days with. Uh, the press conference as well. So Kirk's, it's very, very clear. Kirk's head is swimming at times because, and I think we talked about this yesterday, this defense offers up looks that that he has has not seen. And Dex, if you want to fire it, this is one I asked Kirk to give some specific examples of what's giving him so much trouble. I would love to just kind of tell you everything about our defense, but I'm probably not going to do that. So I understand the question, but... um... Out of respect for Flo and and not giving away secrets, I'll probably exercise caution and not share much. But, um, you know, they put on tape the last few years, and I think they just do a good job with their fronts, their coverages, their pressures, disrupting timing. Um, I've had some good conversations with him where I've been able to learn a lot about his background in football, and uh, it's, it's been great having him. Not going to give away the B Flo secret sauce. <laughs> well, and I don't think he wants to give away what's confusing him. Like, it's very, very clear that because of how this d- defense moves and the fronts he's seeing, um, I don't think it's a reach to say he's confused at times. And he talked well, about that. And and look, it's not it, it's June. It's fine. I'm sure he's seen this before. But but as we discussed yesterday, you guys, this is going to give him an opportunity to improve himself in practice. That I'm guessing in training camp at the end of the day last year, he probably didn't get as much as Kevin O'Connell wanted. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's a different system and a different front. You know, Mike Zimmer defenses were a 4 3 base technically, but what made Mike Zimmer defenses confusing in practice and in games? Oftentimes they would put a bunch of dudes up by the line of scrimmage, and you're the offensive line, the quarterback, and you're waving high to about nine different people at the line. You're trying to sort out. Who's coming? Who's going? Who are the known pass rushers? Is there a safety blitz coming? So if you have to spend an extra half a second dissecting that as the ball is snapped, you might make a bad decision. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there, there's a chance. Just you might you might see some rough practices in this, uh, you know, training camp period coming up in July, August. And maybe it'll just make the Vikings offense better for it going forward. So the the OTAs and minicamp comes to an end with first round pick Jordan Addison not having practiced at all. I would say right now the depth chart goes um, Justin Jefferson. So with, without without Jordan because he he's out right yeah. now the de- the depth chart Justin Jefferson KJ Osborne Tristan Jackson Jalen Naylor who made a nice catch today. Um, those guys are they're gonna battle. And I think one of those two for sure is going to make this team. Naylor definitely intrigues me. And Jackson, Jackson is, I mean, he's not a big name, but 
definitely there's some potential here. That's the good news. The bad news is, or the flip side is this. Jordan Addison is so small. I'm a little bit concerned he got hurt this quickly in basically non-contact practices. Mm. Uh, you know, when Jordan Addison stands by Justin Jefferson, and I mean, Justin's a big guy, but he's not like big. Um, there is a noticeable difference. I, I am, I am, I do think Jordan Addison can run routes well, and I think he's got real potential. That being said, I am worried about his ability to stay on the field health wise. So th- there's the health angle, but in terms of just missed time in OTAs and minicamp, how much does missing all of those practices set him back going into his rookie season? Definitely sets him back some. Now, now they will tell you the Vikings, and I'm sure if, if Jordan would talk to me, which he doesn't, uh, if they would talk to me, did you, I'm try, sure, did you try again today? <laughs> no, I was busy with, with stuff, but I would sure that I'm sure they would tell you that the well, you know, he's got the script because he's got the script of plays with him, right? And he's carrying it around. Um, but yeah, it concerns me a bit. It, it definitely doesn't help not to practice. And because Kirk, and this is to Kirk's credit big time, because Kirk, as far as I know, was at every practice, OTAs included, you know, that's a chance for a guy who is expected to, I think, step in and be the number two receiver to get a lot of work with QB1. So I can't sit here and say that holding and looking at a script is going to do the same for you that that it would if you were actually engaged in the routes with Justin on the field and KJ. And, you know, keep in mind, Addison got banged up in a rookie camp at which they didn't go hard at all. So I don't know what exactly transpired there. Yeah. But, I mean, he he will go into training camp, as far as I know, having had exactly zero snaps with Kirk. That's not a good thing. No. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, at some point it'd be nice if those guys could throw together, get some timing down. But, yeah, I just – so there's the injury stuff and the size stuff at the end of the day. I think you almost have to put the size thing off to the side because this front office clearly understands how to measure players, right? Like height, weight, all the different things that go into it. Now, his RAS score, his relative athletic score was not very good. So they're they're banking on a guy with a non-elite RAS score being so good as an artistic route runner despite size and blow you away 40 time. So, yeah, like those things are a question, but this front office said, nah, don't worry about it. Like right. there's all sorts of options. They, they they could have traded back. They said, nope, we believe that this is the right thing to do. Or at least it seemed like Kevin O'Connell and mm-hmm. um, um, what's his name? Uh, Keenan McCardell, the wide receiver coach, who was very high on this pick too. So, but yeah, I think missing all these practices, it's a timing thing. You know, maybe he's a good enough route runner where he can just kind of step in the second week in August and make it happen. But it's something to keep an eye on. It's a thing. It's, it's a, a thing, thing for sure. It, yeah, it's it's not a, yeah, it's a, on a scale of one to 10, it's probably like a three. Okay. So if 10 is just panic, my God, what's going on here? It's probably a three. But I, I don't think that you can separate the injuries and size because I think they might go, and this is what scares me a little bit, hand in hand. Yeah. Because, I mean, in this league, you're going you're gonna to get press coverage. Defensive backs kick your ass. Like, that's not a surprise. I mean, Justin Jefferson's a strong human being. Yeah. And so, yes, it's definitely worth monitoring. It's definitely worth, and guess what? If if he gets hurt, K.J. Osborne, like it or not, bumps up to two. And that's my point. Tristan Jackson or or Naylor very well might get a chance. Yeah. Hey, before we keep digging through your digital notebook here, your mini camp musings, a shout out to our friends at Athletic Greens. So uh, old Macadac discovered Athletic Greens about six years ago from one of my favorite podcasts. And now it's kind of cool. I get to tell you on this podcast about how AG1 has been a great boost to my uh, nutritional regimen. 75 high-quality ingredients that give me important daily nutrients. It's like having nutritional insurance to start your day or to maybe boost the middle of your day. You just put a scoop in your water, you shake it up, you drink it. It's fantastic. Brain fog lifted, energy levels heightened. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash purple daily, athleticgreens.com slash purple daily. 
I should have tipped off the sports dad before we started here. Are you in a position notes wise to talk about Finch home solutions or should oh, we wait I, until later? Oh, no, no. I most de- definitely okay. am. I know and you were, you were locked out. I didn't know if you had your notes. With I was you. locked out, but no, I got my notes here and here's the best called part. Kelly look, Finch. And look at that gorgeous <laughs> van. Yeah. Pick, Finch Cody picked the lock. In. That's what yeah. they did. Cause Cody can do it all. He's that good. And look at that van. Does that van remind you of a certain team that you absolutely love? But guess what? That van's never going to let you down because they're going to come to your house and they are going to fix any electrical issues that you need fixed. That's right. In the, in the Finch home solutions world of the NFC title game, they make the winning kick every single time. It could be outdoor problems. It could be flickering lights or a dead outlet inside. It doesn't matter. Finch is always going to hand you a championship when it comes to fixing the problems electronically around your house. FinchHomeSolutions.com. Or you can call them 612-357-2604. FinchHomeSolutions.com. If you're looking for electrical work, big or small, they're the people to call. And don't forget to tell them Purple Daily sent you. All right. Back to the digital notes here. What else do you have from your mini camp musings? I got a, uh, two more things. I got two more things, one on offense, one on defense. Let's start on defense because you asked me this question yesterday, and the question was, you know, who were the – who were the – the um, with Daniil Hunter out, pass rushers, the, you know, the prime. And I said they're going to put on a ton of pressure. They definitely have um, fronts that are overloaded incredibly. They're going to bring pressure. But to answer your question, my observation is that right now, DJ Wanham and then uh, Davenport are going to be your – they're the they're the first okay. guys on the depth chart. Patrick Jones Jr. is probably the third guy. It's Patrick Jones the second. Okay. The second. second. I'm sorry. Patrick Jones the second. What's but Davenport, the difference, by the way? Um, a junior is – a junior means that you're uh, – it means your father, like your father, father is yeah. the same name. So, yeah. so like my grandpa was Phil Mackey. Yes. Could so I'm not Phil Mackey Jr. But could I be Phil Mackey the second? I think was that's correct. Are you? Yeah. Are, were you both Phillips? Yes. Then I think you're the second. Yeah, I think you're the second man. And you, you start to use that. Lie. We'll start, start to use that it. going forward here start on the show. Yeah, this is Purple Daily Daily Vikings Entertainment. <laughs> with Judd Zolgad, Declan Goff, and Phil Mackey the second. I was almost junior. I was almost Steve Junior. My mom grew up though with a with a Jim like junior, junior, and she didn't want to do another junior again in her adulthood, so she kiboshed that. Good for her. I'm Good trying to mom. envision you as a Steve. I know. You know what's a funny? Bit. I, I, can see a I, bit. I use Steve in coffee shop or name matters where can I get your name for the order? Declan's catching on. It is catching yeah. on, but it never yeah. gets it it it, like it still gets butchered about every third time. You can't really butcher Steve. Yeah. You know, Steve. Yeah, pretty easy. Pretty easy. You can't really misinterpret it. You like know, Judd is Jeff, said, so I just say Jeff. The coffee shop confusion thing, because it happens to like 50% of people, right? You say you say your name, they don't catch it, they spell it wrong, yeah. and then they they announce the name, and you figure out, why don't they just assign you a name? So you, or a you, number. Or a number. Your number seven. Yeah. And then when I and they write number seven on the cup, and when they call number seven... You go up, right? When I get that Costco hot dog, I'm not Steve or Declan. I'm number 732. You know, that's just, that's <laughs> yeah. who I am. And I'm fine with that. I'm like an inmate. The key is just get a large black coffee and wait for it so they can't, like, send you to wait. Just just hover right next to the well, glass. Cause, yeah, because because if you get a specialty drink, you got to go wait, right? It's like, what's your name? Your order will be up and blah, blah, blah. Uh-uh, I just say large black. And then they call it something else and I get all... A vente or something, and I'm like, no, it's just a large black coffee. Just give, give me the damn coffee. Some other people in the comments are saying that second and junior have to be son of. I don't know, Patrick Jones. <laughs> Find a way on okay. the field, guy. He's Come the on, second. <laughs> he is the second. He's the second. Okay, <laughs> last thing. Um, so as far as my witnessing today's session, T.J. Hawkinson didn't do a, a lot. And he was, he did nothing in the last OTA that we had access to a, uh, a week ago or so. So if, so if something's wrong, I wouldn't be concerned. Like Harrison Phillips did nothing in the entire program. He was here, rides an exercise bike, 
he clearly had something done, you know, surgically. I don't know. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, this led to an interesting, uh, an interesting moment in today's practice in a red zone drill. And that is Josh Oliver's hands are for real. So he came out of college known as a receiver. Yes. He's a huge dude. Yep. Uh, developed into, ha, has made his bones, his bucks in the National Football League because of his blocking ability. But the Vikings have said more than once since they signed him, hey, we think there's more there to unlock from a receiving standpoint. Um, with a target that he presents, it's really, and, and you're not going to be surprised by this at all, it's clear Kirk loves that, you know, because Kirk loves his big tight ends. Yep. Now, that because that was – and I think that that is why uh, when when Rudolph did his ode to the Vikings on the Players' Tribune, he didn't thank Kirk because, like, he didn't become that guy, which is sort of weird in retrospect. But I'm just telling you, red zone, Josh Oliver could be a very interesting outlet for Kirk Cousins. So, yeah, Josh Oliver – three seasons well four seasons in the nfl he missed one due to injury so he's played in three seasons 26 catches only in three seasons hmm. but in college his last year at san jose state in 2018 he had 56 catches for 709 yards and four touchdowns an average of 13 yards a catch yep so he he definitely has experience catching more than he has in the nfl and you're yep. right like he's he's a six foot five 250 pound monster I don't think anyone's saying he's going to go for, you know, like 10 catches in a game like TJ Hawkinson, no. but could he, oh, but I'm could saying, you, could you be running yeah. 23 personnel yeah, inside the 10 That's what yard line? Said yesterday to me, he, right? he leaks out back of the end zone touchdown. Don't look now, but a great open field catch over the middle today was made by don't sleep on my guy, Johnny Munt. That's right. He's still on the team. I forgot about that. <laughs> So you're 23 personnel. What if it's Mon, Hawkinson, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Oliver? Oliver? Let's go back to Ham. So it'd be. Would you go? Ham, you'd probably go Ham, Madison, Ham, or would you go Madison Wangwu? Would you put a couple of running? You probably go fullback in that case, right? Yeah, so Ham, you, yeah. Madison Ham. But what and if then you went Ham Wangwu? Oh, you could do Ham Wangwu. Football. So many. Bang. Guys. That's Amazing. the end of my notebook. My digital there it is. notebook has been sapped. That's great stuff right there from Judd Zolgad. He is the eyes and ears on the ground at Vikings practice for us this offseason. And that's Thanks. the last practice because they they're not doing yeah, a man. third day of minicamp. Nope. That's the last practice until training camp in about six weeks from now. Mm -hmm. So don't get arrested, anyone. That goes for yep. you guys too. I'm about to say us, yeah. us three too. Man. That's, that's what. That's what I'm sure. I'm sure KOC, as he sent him into the summer, said, "Stay out of trouble. Just uh, don't be doing anything stupid." We saw the release date of that quarterback documentary on Netflix, eight part series. We talked about earlier in the show. That's coming out on July 12th. We have a bunch of fun theme weeks planned going forward here. So we've. You know, just because the Vikings are going to be off and not practicing or doing anything for six weeks doesn't mean that we are taking all those days off, too. We are a 365-day-per-year Vikings entertainment juggernaut. And if you're new to us, maybe you're watching for the first time here, please click the subscribe button and the like button on the Purple Daily YouTube channel so we can keep spreading the word about Purple Daily. So any other final thoughts from the Vikings' last off-season practice until training camp? We're very happy. We made good. a ton of progress, looking good, feeling good, uh, optimistic, all of that stuff. Let's or, go. I mean, that's at least what they told me. So, Yeah, well, we'll see what Kevin O'Connell has to say when he makes his second appearance. on. Per He's going to become a friend of the show after making his friend well, of the Declan, show, second he, appearance. He is right now, right? Yeah, he's pretty much a friend of the show. Yeah. I mean, Dex. He's addressing you by name. I know, I know he's only been on once, you know, the, I guess the parameters of friend of the show can be a little bit gray, but yeah, I would call him a friend of the show. If you're a multi-time appearance mm -hmm. guy on the show, I think friend you're, of the show. you're a friend of the show for sure. So, all right. Thanks for hanging out with us here live on the purple daily YouTube channel. And uh, we'll catch you guys tomorrow for Kevin O'Connell and a random Viking of the week.